2013, right before he started his professional boxing career, Alexander Usyk visited Vladimir Klitschko's training camp. At that time, Vladimir Klitschko had dominated the heavyweight division for over five years. He had earned three out of four champion belts. Alexander Usyk watched the living legend as he dreamed of even more impressive achievements. In three years, Usyk won his first champion title in the WBO version. In another year and a half, after the semi-final of World Boxing Super Series, Usyk became the WBC World Champion. In the summer of 2018, in the finals of the Super Series, the titles of all four versions were at stake. Usyk won the fight with Murat Gassiev and earned the WBA and IBF belts. Alexander gathered even more than the whole collection. The WBC version awarded Usyk with an extra belt made especially for him, the undisputed world champion. Super Series triumph, Usyk returned to Kiev and showed his old and new trophies to the public. Five champion belts and the Muhammad Ali Cup, all of which Usyk received for winning the Boxing Super Series. In the history of professional boxing, there were numerous undisputed champions. But nobody except Usyk ever owned that many of the most prestigious trophies at the same time. Nobody. Ever. Not only adults, but also kids watched the most titled boxer in the world in awe. Here he is, so close, the living idol and, at the same time, a great proof that everything is possible in life. It's never too late to go for your dreams. Notably, Usyk only started boxing when he was 15. Initially, nobody wanted to accept me to boxing because I was too old. And then the trainer Sergei Lapin took me. I didn't have any such thoughts that it was, perhaps, too late. He said we should train more because we started late. And we needed to do a lot to catch up. He said, you can't do it? Well, then don't come here if you can't do that. 
People who cannot do it shouldn't be here. And the way he said it, the way he presented it, I actually started dreaming as I was walking home. First, you dream of something, and then it becomes a reality. Bam, you made it. You dream of going to the All-Ukrainian Championship. You go, and you win. The world, Europe, the Olympics, it was all first in my head. The desire, the desire of a child who, perhaps, didn't even believe it. Alexander was born in the capital city of Crimea, Simferopol. Before starting in boxing, he'd done folk dancing, martial arts, and football. His family wasn't rich, and football cost a lot. That's why Usyk transferred into a free boxing section. While he alternated between the victories and the failures, the victories were much more numerous. In several years, he made his way from the junior to the adult Ukrainian national team. In 2008, after the Olympic Games in Beijing, Usyk started training with Vasily Lomachenko's father. The guys were pals even before that. And then, after sharing the same trainer and the same team, they became the closest friends. That year, Usyk won the European Championship for the first time. And then, the World Championship. In 2012, Alexander won the award that he considers the most important in his athletic career. It's the gold of the London Olympics. Upon coming back to Ukraine, Usyk went on a tour around the country with the other winners and champions of the Olympics. A few days before that tour concluded, Usyk's father passed away. He never saw his son after the victory in the Olympics. I was with him at that moment. We were together at the funerals too, as well as that day when he got a phone call that the sorrowful event had happened. Yes, it was hard. We were in Odessa and my mom called me, said that it was over. Vasily says, I'll go with you. He went with me. I took my Olympic medal. He was lying there. I took his hand in mine touched the Olympic medal and said, here, it has arrived. That was it. I put it back and left the room. After his father's death, Alexander virtually became the head of the family. The need to provide became another argument in favor of the transfer to professional boxing. Usyk did it gradually. First, he was boxing for half a year for the semi-professional team, Ukrainian Adamans, which consisted almost in its entirety of the golden Ukrainian Olympic team. Usyk, Lamachenko, Gvazdik. As Adamans, they also had a steady streak of victories. In the fall of 2013, Alexander signed his first full professional contract. He chose a Ukrainian company, K2 Promotion. Before that, Usyk visited the USA, where, aided by Igus Klimas, he communicated with the owners of the most authoritative organizations, Golden Boy, Main Events, Top Rank. But for various reasons, the Ukrainian boxer and the American promoters did not find common ground. I personally approached Bob Arum, and I said, Tell me, are you interested in Usyk without Lomachenko? He said, no. I was a little hurt by that. I went back to Sandy Usyk and I said, you shouldn't sign that contract. I had such a period in my life back then that I couldn't go anywhere. Not to America, not to anywhere. I didn't want to go alone. I didn't want to go anywhere without my family. I might even have lost my family had I gone by myself back then. I thought about that, and I realized that I had to stay and start it from here. 
So, in the end, the offer we made to Usyk was the most attractive to him. For the moment of signing, the only question was, what are the prospects? One and a half months after signing the contract, Usyk debuted in the professional ring. The arena of the Kiev Sports Palace met Alexander with an ovation. He entered the ring wearing the robe ornamented with national embroidery, with a Cossack crest and with a Cossack song playing in the background. Usyk's cornerman was Anatoly Lomachenko, and he didn't have much reason to worry. In his fight with Felipe Romero, Alexander had free reign. Soon, the Mexican's trainer threw in the white towel. He has a professional debut, and he is holding his first match as a pro a six-round one. He isn't normally the main fighter of the evening because there's also a title fight. Nevertheless, people have come to see Usyk. During the first two years of his pro career, Usyk held nine fights. He won all of them early, and none of his opponents managed more than eight rounds. Usyk fought in Kiev and Brovary, in Odessa and Lviv. And only in the latter city, Usyk did not manage to have a full arena because the fight took place at a stadium. But those 13,000 spectators at the Lviv fight became a record number of an audience for a boxing match in the whole history of Ukraine. Usyk always commanded special attention. Other boxers attracted less interest, but everyone wanted to go to Usyk's fights. Both first and second level of the establishment, all the state institutions, various branches of power. To the VIPs, as well as to ordinary spectators, Usyk gave something that had not existed in Ukraine before, a combination of boxing on the highest level and an amazing show. Plus his image, charisma, manly appearance, and an open, cheerful character. Usyk won the country's public affection at once, and soon, almost as quickly, became its idol. Any event with Usyk's participation, be it a boxing night, a weighing, an open training session, or a meeting with supporters, guaranteed a full house. This allowed us to hold fights for him regularly, without long breaks, to gradually raise his opposition level, to bring him into the world rankings, and make confident steps to the top of the world rankings, then to earn the right to fight for the world champion title. Usyk held his champion title fight in less than three years after the start of his pro career, his promotion company fulfilled one of the principal clauses of the contract. Apart from the WBO belt, Alexander qualified for a record, which previously belonged to Evander Holyfield. In case of victory, Usyk would outperform the achievement of the great American in the minimum number of fights necessary to win a title in cruiserweight. For the first time in his pro career, Usyk fought on foreign territory. The fight against the actual champion, Krzysztof Klawacki, took place on the 17th of September 2016 in the Polish city of Gdansk.
заходи справа, справа заходи. The fight lasted for 12 rounds and ended with Usyk's confident win on points. He got his victory, first and foremost, owing to his class. Before his fight with Glowacki, Sasha met fighters who were stronger than Glowacki in amateur boxing. The issue here was that Sasha had to stand longer against him. Here, he had to do 12 rounds and not five, for example. Two months after he earned the champion title, Usyk flew to America, where he held the final part of his preparation to defend the title. The Ukrainian's debut in the USA took place in the undercard of the legendary Bernard Hopkins fight. Usyk's fight got into the HBO broadcast which meant that the local boxing market was interested in Alexander. Meanwhile, Usyk did his best to boost that interest even before the fight. That case was exemplary in how charisma works. A person who doesn't even speak the language of the country where he is performing comes to the press conference where the main fighter is Bernard Hopkins. Usyk enters the stage and says, Hello, I'm Alexander Usyk, and some other phrase in English. They basically started salivating. There they were, and instantly, he lit the fire of excitement in them. They immediately started jotting down his name. Usyk hoped to debut in a fight against a top rival, but they couldn't reach an agreement with any of them. He met a sturdy, mid-level boxer, Tabiso Machunu. Alexander knocked him out in the ninth round. The Ukrainian's next fight also happened in the USA. He won against the local fighter, Mike Hunter, in points. The results of Usyk's visits to the States were twofold. He defended the title twice, but America expected the world champion to defeat the opponents of that level faster. Alexander was boxing in full arenas of the most sophisticated boxing audience in the world. But the Ukrainian's level of recognition remained local. Even the ring announcers kept mispronouncing his name. progress in terms of his earnings either. No, 
In terms of payments, I didn't feel any difference. I got even less for my hunter fight than I'd got for the previous fight. Alexander held his fight against Hunter in a format of a unique boxing event. That same evening, there were fights of Vasily Lamachenko and Alexander Gvostik. It was the first ever Ukrainian-only boxing show which was broadcast by HBO. After that, Usyk returned to Ukraine. He dreamt of joining the titles, but the prospect of such a fight was ambiguous, as was Alexander's boxing future in general. Everything changed in the summer of 2017, when Usyk was invited in the new tournament, the World Boxing Super Series. The rules were simple and straightforward. Four world champions and four highest-ranking boxers would meet to fight and determine the strongest one. The awards promised to the winner looked extremely attractive, too. He would get a solid money reward, the Muhammad Ali Cup, and all four of the most prestigious versions' belts. The one who triumphed in the Super Series would become the undisputed world champion. So we made a decision. We talked with Igis over the phone and reflected on it. Well, what do we have to lose? Nothing really. Sasha says, this is what I want. And of course, we did everything possible to make what he wanted a reality for him. When all the other champions signed, I was the last one. I said, of course. It will be ridiculous if I don't do this. I also found out that there will be the Muhammad Ali Cup. I felt euphoric inside. Alexander was born on the same day as Muhammad Ali. Only half a century later, float like a butterfly, sting like a bee. Usyk boxes according to his idol's famous rule, but it isn't only the date of birth and boxing philosophy that unites the two men. Usyk is also a very principled man. He is free in his mind and his actions. Usyk was becoming more and more popular, but his critics grew in number as well as his fans. Every person has a vulnerable spot. For Usyk, it turned out to be his native Crimea. I'm not going to forget where I came from. That's where my kids were born, where I graduated from school, where I started my journey, my beginnings. In 1987, in January. 2012, he captured Olympic gold for Ukraine. A fine set of the represents Simferopol, Ukraine. Here is the undefeated. Stop! <laughs> Stop! Um, when you are asked the same question over and over, and you answer it like a parrot, again and again, one perfect moment you just... I think I would get rude on the fifth time. And he is more reserved. He can say the same thing over and over, again and again. He answers and says what he thinks and what his opinion is. Я не попугай, чтобы повторять вам по сто раз, что, где, когда. It's my home, that's where I was born. I will say that again. If it weren't for Crimea, there would be no Sasha Usyk who sits here and talks to you. 
Я представляю Украину во всем мире. Флаг поднимается украинский, гимн играет украинский. Вот мой ответ вам, провокаторы. Дамы и господа, до Симрухпола, Украин, до Рейнинг, Дефендинг, Undefeated, WBO Cruiserweight, Чемпион мира, Александр Александрович Усик. For Usyk, the Super Series began with a fight against Marco Hawk. The Ukrainian again fought on the opponent's territory, in Germany. There, for the first time in his professional career, he encountered what is referred to as the negative side of pro boxing. Hawk was nervous during weighing, because even on foreign ground, Usyk felt completely at home. And his lapse of tongue only increased the number of Usyk's fans. How do you feel? I feel. I am very feel. And became the hit of the whole Super Series. In the Super Series semifinals, Usyk had to fight away from home again on the 27th of January of 2018 in Riga, the capital of Latvia. He met Maris Bridas. Before the fight, Usyk was asked how he felt. He replied the same as the previous time, but this time on purpose. Now you know I have to ask you, right? Like, how are you feeling at this very moment? I don't feel. I am very feel. <laughs> Yeah.
He wasn't well prepared. He had some unnecessary thoughts in his head before the fight. If you want to ask me whether I liked the fight, no, I didn't like it, of course. I didn't like the fight. I told Sasha about that. I really didn't like the way he managed that match. I realized that it wasn't Sasha. I saw that it wasn't Sasha. I saw it. It wasn't Sasha's boxing style. I saw that it wasn't Sasha's manner of fight management. Really, it was absolutely. There was no big picture. There was only a task to enter, fight, beat him, and finish him. Those thoughts only. We go to the judges' scorecards. Craig Metcalf scored this contest 114-114 even. When we entered the changing room, the gentleman organizers came in and told us the truth. They said, guys, you can't even imagine how narrowly you cut it. By the WBSS rules, there can be no tied victory. That means that someone must go into the next stage. They got the fourth judge to determine that. If three judges have tie in their votes, there must be a fourth judge who has their own count. In case the fourth one also has a tie, they take the twelfth round. He who wins the twelfth round is the winner. If they get a tie in the twelfth round, they take the eleventh round. And this way, it can go down to the first round. But in the last round, one judge gave the win to Usyk. And two judges gave the win to Bridis. If that judge hadn't given the win to Usyk, then there would have been a tie in the notes, 114 to 114 and 114 to 114. Then they wouldn't have gone to the fourth judge. Danny Van Deville also counted 114 to 114, and the twelfth round was given to Breedis. So we were a millimeter away from losing, and it wouldn't even be a real loss, but an unlucky coincidence of technical events. And the victory could have slipped through our fingers. The official victory could have gone to the other side. At the beginning of March, a mere eight months after the victory in the Breedis fight, Usyk started his preparation for the final fight. The opponent was known, Murat Gassiev. But the time and place of the match were not set yet. By preliminary arrangement, it was supposed to happen on the 11th of May in the town of Jeddah in Saudi Arabia. But the Russian side made the initiative to hold the fight in Moscow, and the negotiations continued. However, in less than a month of training, Usyk was forced to bring his work to a halt. It became known later that he injured his hand in the fight with Breedus. Due to the renewed workload, the trauma became not only notable, but very serious. I come out to the street to see Usyk off and say bye, and he says, Sonia, something is off. I wanted to do my hand walk in the ring after my today's training session, as I usually do. I couldn't do it. I say, why, what happened? He says, I have a sharp pain in my elbow. I think it was there even earlier. I think there were kind of hints on that pain. Even in the fight, and after the fight, it came out and gave complications. I wasn't just a little apprehensive. I thought it might have been something very serious that could take it all away from me. 
the surgery, rehabilitation. The fight with Gassiev was postponed until the end of July. It was during the rehabilitation after the injury that Alexander started thinking about changing his trainer one more time. Alexander met his first pro mentor in the camp of Klitschko Jr. James Ali Bashir was Volodymyr's second trainer, but he became the main trainer in Usyk's team. Their cooperation began in 2013. Bashir lived in the USA and usually worked with Usyk personally only in the second part of the training camp, on the sparring sessions and, of course, during the fight. Keep popping your jab! Keep popping the jab! Nice boxing! Keep boxing like that! On the outside, this union looked close to perfect. Both being cheerful and lively people, they were perfectly matched in character. The results were good too. With Bashir, Usyk won the world champion title. Da? Yeah. You sure? Yes. But right before the next fight, there was a tense feeling in Alexander's changing room. Another American felt too much at home there, Russ Amber. It seemed that Bashir remained the main trainer only nominally. At the beginning of 2017, Usyk terminated his cooperation with Bashir. In the next fight, Alexander was accompanied by the cutman from Vasily Lamachenko's team, Russ Amber. Later, it turned out that the American could not give his work with Usyk enough attention. He remained in Usyk's team, but only as a cutman. And the boxer had to begin his search for a mentor anew. Usyk found a new trainer rather quickly. He was very close. Not long before the start of the Super Series, Sergei Varamanyuk, the boxer's old friend, took the place. Before that, he used to play the role of Alexander's second trainer and was also his manager. Vadamanyuk had no experience as the main trainer, however, and now, all of a sudden, he was working with the world champion. They worked through two matches together, against Marco Huck and Maris Bridas. Usyk won both fights, but the second one became a Pyrrhic victory for Vadamanyuk. The way the Ukrainian fought in Riga caused both fascination and dismay. Why take such risks? Why choose an ill-matched tactic for Usyk? And those questions were not directed at Alexander. Soon, the boxer himself realized that it was not the right trainer for him. Before his fight with Gassiev, Sasha had pulled it all off on his own baggage of knowledge, of experience. Everyone else around him just skimmed the cream and talked about how cool they were and what they'd made of Sasha Usyk. You've made nothing of him. He made you into who you are. He raised you there. And where are you all now? There is one difficulty. There's a challenge to find Sasha a knowledgeable trainer. Not just, you know, to put on the punch mitts and go, 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 jab, jab, down, side, great job, you're the best. But to really understand, to schedule the training day, today we're doing this, tomorrow we're doing that. If I was 15, I would just do it because I'm told, do it. Now I need specifics. I must understand why I'm doing this. I think I'm a difficult person, probably, or demanding, I don't know. I need specifics, perfectionism. He needs a trainer whom he will believe, whom he will trust, whom he will respect. He needs someone with authority. Anatoly Lomachenko, Brian McIntyre, Andre Rogier, and Abel Sanchez. After parting with Bashir, Alexander named the one he wanted to train with. Usyk had always wanted to train with his good friend and, officially, the best trainer in the world, Anatoly Lomachenko. Vasily's father worked with Alexander when he was still an amateur, and it was Anatoly Nikolaevich who acted as Usyk's corner man during his debut as a pro. 
But the trainer was focused on working with his son, and he did not have time to be Alexander's personal mentor also. As Usyk was rehabilitating from the surgery, he flew to New York to see Vasily Lamachenko's fight. There, Alexander supported his friend and spoke with his father. This is what the conversation in New York was like. I just approached him and said, nobody can help me except you. I need your help. So that day we arrived in Kiev. Next day, I got into the car took my son and a friend with me, and went to Belgorod and Ostrovsky to speak with him the day after, as soon as I arrived from New York. Because of his injury, Vasily did not plan to return to his training before the fall of 2018. That was why Anatoly Nikolaevich, who was willing to help, also had enough time to prepare Usyk for his fight with Gassiev. So the trainer said yes. He immediately went through his suggestions for the boxes camp, the training plan, the deadlines, the place, the team composition. Usyk drove back to Kiev in an excellent mood. He just secured his dream trainer. Everything was being born as I was driving back from him. We were driving with my friend and my son, and I called that day the day of yes. Usyk prepared for the Super Series final behind closed doors. Neither the boxer nor any members of his team spoke to journalists. That's why nobody knew the place of the training camp or the champions team or any other details of the prep. The only leak was a video on social media where Usyk trained with Russ Amber. But the American was just assisting Anatoly Nikolaevich, who did not want to make his participation public for tactical reasons. The boxer kept training without knowing where and when the fight would take place. The Russian side did everything possible to force the Ukrainian to fight on foreign land. The negotiations even passed to the stage of intrigues and speculations. I called him once and he said, I'm preparing for the fight. I will go wherever I have to go. All the negotiations were between myself, Krasyuk, and the Russian promoters. Then we received an offer from Russia. Let's set up the Super Series. We give you many millions and you leave the Super Series. And let's hold the fights for all the belts in Moscow. Well, there were provocations like that, sort of. We'll flood you with money. But Usyk didn't even pay attention to that. His only focus was to go there, conquer, and leave. We had to make a choice. What was to be done? Option number one, refuse the fight in Moscow because it was set in Moscow. Or option number two, go and fight. So we either fight or we don't. For me, it was kind of a challenge too, I guess. For me personally, the fact that I'm going to fight in Moscow, and I wanted that. The 21st of July, Olympiski Sports Arena in Moscow. Mere minutes are left before Usyk enters the ring. One month ago, he was a definite favorite. But now, bookmakers think Gassiev has a better chance to win. Not only because he is fighting on the opponent's territory, nobody knows who prepared Alexander for the match, what his physical shape is, and how he would perform in his fight. At that moment, of course, that was the best version of me.
All three for your winner by unanimous decision. He's still undefeated. And now the undisputed cruiserweight champion of the world. You know, I really let go emotionally. I went down on my knees and I really said a short prayer. Lord Jesus Christ, have mercy on me. That night, after the end of the fight and the end of the World Boxing Super Series tournament, Alexander became the most titled boxer of his time and one of the most successful fighters in history. First, he won everything as an amateur. The Olympics, World Championship, and the European Championship. And then he became an undisputed champion as a professional. He received the belts of WBC, WBO, WBA, and IBF, as well as Muhammad Ali Cup. No boxer before him ever possessed such a collection of awards. The undisputed champion, that's a story. I think he's going down in history. No need to invent anything. He's in history already. He's got all the belts. Well, if you also receive the Muhammad Ali Cup, considering that he is your idol, that was, of course, a historic moment for him. One that will stay forever in his memory, and in the memory of all boxing fans. It's in boxing history now. On the 1st of October 2018, Usyk left his training camp for half a day. He had been invited to the opening ceremony of the WBC Congress that took place in Kiev. Lennox Lewis, Evander Holyfield, the Klitschko brothers. Usyk sat in the front row in the company of world-famous boxers, true legends. Back in the day, in Volodymyr Klitschko's camp, he dreamt of going beyond the achievements of his compatriot. It took him only five years. Usyk did not stay long at the opening ceremony. The training sessions were in full gear, and virtually every minute was scheduled for training. The Super Series was over. A new challenge lies ahead. I basically conquered all those belts thanks to this tournament. For me, this tournament is sort of a central point. After that, begins a new chapter of my life. 